Hey guys, a quick um, video on this extreme climate long lanes drought. It's the middle of March and we just got another three or so inches of snow. I came down here to check and see if there was any positive signs of life. Uh, none that I can see, but you know, that's to be expected right now. We'll see what happens. I've got a 50 degree day or two coming up and I'll be able to peek inside there and tell you for sure. But as of the last check, they were still alive. Um, I don't see any signs of life. I poked at the entrance there. That's why there's a couple of bees. Uh, laying dead there on the bottom. So I've seen if anybody would come out and see what's going on, but no luck. So we'll see on a 50 degree day. All right, a quick update for everybody who's asking, did the bees make it through winter? I don't know. I'll let you know when winter stops being winter. This is ridiculous. But um, as soon as it's warm enough for me to open it up, I'll open it up and let you know. So just hang in there, everybody. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. The first 50 degree day in northern Wisconsin. The beehives are down there. And I have to be honest with you, I'm kind of hoping they didn't make it through winter. And there's two reasons for that. One is I've got a couple of good ideas on how to redesign the door for that one right there, the, the cover for it. So it's a little easier and it gets a little work shelf. There were a couple of people who gave me ideas there. so. I'd really like to do that, and it's hard to do that with bees in there, so I'm kind of hoping they died. And then the second reason I'm kind of hoping they didn't make it is, if they made it, um, that doesn't tell me what doesn't work, right? It just tells me that everything kind of worked, and I don't know if anything failed. So if they didn't make it, then I'll be able to tell a lot more. I'll be able to do it like a, uh, an autopsy on the hive. So I'm really excited. Uh, it's great if they made it, I, and if they didn't, that's great too. So we'll go see if they made it and hopefully, well, either way, I'm going to be happy. So let's see. All right, moment of truth. The snow is gone. You can see where it was this morning. There's still snow here this morning, but it's gone now. So 50 degrees. I don't see any bees. Um, nothing coming out of the hole down there. And I don't have a veil or anything. But this is the moment of truth. We'll see if they made it. This is a little stuck from, you know, sit over winter. And I don't hear anything. No buzzing or anything. I don't see anything. They're not here. I'm not bailed up, so if they come peeling out of here real angry, then no bees there. That is not a good sign. Now, I didn't have a lot of, they didn't have a lot of calm and I didn't give them food or anything. I didn't expect them to really do well, but um, we'll see how this works. And the, the most interesting thing, yeah, there's no bees in here. Now the, the rule is, that's interesting that there are no bees. So um, I can't imagine they absconded or did anything. They might all be dead and just laying in the bottom. There's some bees here, so that's probably what's happened is they've all dead. They always say the hive's never dead until it's warm and dead. Um, but, you know, they didn't have a lot of resources going through the winter. So it looks like it didn't make it, which is actually a good thing because now I can rebuild this thing here. And the lid, which I'm very excited about rebuilding. I had some really good ideas on that. Um... Instead of opening up, it will open down. And I, I'm thinking it might be a two-piece design. And the reason I have it open down is because then I can have a, uh, a cover over this. You know, I put this on here uh, so the rain wouldn't get in there. But if you put a, a board over that and, and, you know, finish that off, then the rain can't get in there. And I'm thinking of putting hinges kind of in the middle here so that it's two-piece and it folds down. And uh, this piece goes down here, and then you have like a little flat work surface. Um, somebody gave me that idea. They, th they said, you know, have the whole thing fold down, but I, d I don't think you want to be three feet away. Like if you're in a wheelchair, you don't want to be three feet away from, or whatever that is. That's not three feet. Two feet away from the hive and then trying to reach in. But a little, like a nine-inch work surface would be really nice, I think. Um, especially for somebody with disabilities, right? You've got a little work surface, you can put things on there, and that'll help a lot, I think. So that's a really good idea, and now I can rebuild it. I'm happy about that. 
and then the other hive there um, they went queenless so I if they make it through I would be stunned um, but I do see a little bit of motion down there let me go wander down there and see what's going on that might have just been a fly if I get stung that'll be the best thing ever I don't see any bees anywhere no I think that, that uh, they went queenless and didn't go into winter so I got a little bit of clamp and I'm excited to to uh, do an autopsy we'll have an autopsy video on this will be like an alien autopsy that should be exciting and uh, I'll pull it apart and we'll talk about where they are like if they died in the cluster if they were spread out um, so that'll be really interesting to see how much food is left all that stuff so look forward to that coming up and also look forward to a redesign of this cover that's a little more friendly for those with disabilities all right, and I thought I'd make a little wrap-up video here and just kind of ramble along because that's what people tend to do on YouTube is make videos in cars. Um, <laughs> I'm doing it because I went out to get some food and I thought I should really wrap up with a summary of what's going on. So that's why I'm going to talk to you and it'll be rambling and I apologize. But um, that colony that we lost is, think of it like a crash test dummy. Not like the beekeeping community thinks of um, losses, right? They say, oh, did you lose your bees? Or did your bees survive? Because if you lost your bees, you have crappy genetics and you're a terrible beekeeper. If your bees survived, then you're brilliant and you have awesome genes. You know, and that's it. Those are the only two options. That's not the case at all. Look, if you have your mites under control and the bees have enough food and there's no, you, you know, you have wind and insulation under control and you're doing something about moisture, you know, to the right degree, your bees are going to make it through winter. I mean, you can have nosema and things go wrong. That's that's great. But for the most part, you get those four things right. And, you know, food, freezing, mites, moisture. You get those right, they'll get through winter. And so when you think about what we're doing with this colony and this hive, I had treated for mites because there's nothing a hive can do about mites, right? That I'm aware of. If I ever think of something, I'll be brilliant. But I, I don't think there's anything a hive can do about mites. So we're talking about food, moisture, and mite, or food, moisture, and um, freezing. And so I didn't insulate this hive, and there's no wind block down there really. And so um, we'll be able to tell if they froze to death, right? When we do the autopsy, um, food is an interesting thing because food and temperature are they go hand in hand. So um, when it gets really cold, bees go into tuper and they don't use any. Food. They just kind of stop and then they kind of come back a little bit. Um, they, they don't use hardly any food. And as if they're more active, like if your winter, what you call winter is 45 degrees, 35 degrees Fahrenheit outside, your bees are actually active inside your, your hive. If what you call winter is negative 20 Fahrenheit, your bees aren't doing anything. So the warmer temperatures, your bees are more active, consuming more resources than in the colder temperature. So there's an amount of food that's needed um, to get the bees through winter in this hive. And it's a question of how do they get to that food and do they, you know, go from frame to frame to frame in this type of a temperature. So if, for instance, they've starved to death with honey right next to them, then we've got a problem, right? We don't want that situation. So that's what we need to find out. If they've consumed all the honey, then what happens is they were able to move frame to frame to frame in the winter in this configuration use up all the food so we've we've learned that um we need a better feeding solution we already know that um so there's a lot to learn about that if moisture was a problem we'll see that with the the way that they've died in the cluster it would have dripped down through the cluster so there's a lot to learn um from our crash test dummy colony down there and uh the thing that i want to take i want everybody to take away is that it's not about was it a success or was it not a success is um, what do we have to learn from this and what are we going to change so that I can hand this hive to anybody, a novice beekeeper, give them a checklist and say, you do these 10 things, you'll have success. Because that's really what this is aimed at is, you know, you've got some people who are maybe disabled or elderly or whatever the situation is. We want to hand them a hive and say, you can, you can go do this and um, you can enjoy working outside and working with bees and you can still do that so hopefully that's what we'll get to and um like i said i'm excited for the autopsy video so we'll see you later and i hope this all made sense and it wasn't too rambling all right bye